Hunt and Braverman are included in the five cabinet members making money as property owners. Plea for politicians to pass the 2019 Rent Amendment Bill as 38 degrees discloses 87 members of Parliament cashing in from real estate business. The Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, and the Home Secretary, Swella Braverman, are part of these five cabinet ministers' clique who receive profits of at least £10,000 annually letting out apartments, referring to the latest glimpse of Parliament's property owners. In all, 68 Conservative MPs, approximately one in five, are presently property owners, regarding a study by a campaign team, 38 degrees, inciting demands for ministers ultimately to apply a 2019 government assurance to modify private letting by cancelling no-fault evictions and humanising renters' rights. Hunt has announced he manages seven flats in Southampton, while Braverman, Gillian Keegan, the Education Secretary, and Lucy Fraser, the Culture Secretary, all confirmed one letting house in the newest House of Commons member's inventory of fiscal benefits. Alex Chalk, the Justice Secretary, also affirmed he has a flat in Shepherd's Bush and a part in a bungalow in Gloucestershire, together making extra cash of over £10,000 in revenue annually. The report totaled 87 members of Parliament property owners over 13% of the Commons of whom 53 received rent revenue from one flat or apartment and 34 from two or additional apartments. By disparity, only 4% of the UK population proclaimed revenue from rentals. On the Labour front bench, David Lammy, Emily Thornberry and Lucy Powell are all property owners. Generally, members of Parliament might be netting as significantly as £2.2 million annually from rentals, the survey uncovered. 38 Degrees issued a statement and I quote, The perspectives of those who profit from renting may be more prominent in Parliament than those of the tenants who remain at the mercy of this broken system. Theresa May reassured the nation in 2019 to terminate the no-fault evictions, and in the last quarter of that year Boris Johnson promised in the Conservative Party universal voting proposal and he said, and I quote, a better deal for renters, including the eviction ban. Approximately 47,000 families have since been defenceless with Section 21 no-fault eviction no property owner factions have rejected the transformations, claiming that, coupled with increasing interest rates, they could indicate the collapse of the sector deteriorating accommodation scarcities, except they had a complementary way of repossessing their houses. Ministers delivered a rent modification white paper in summer 2022, but with six distinctive housing members of Parliament since 2021, draft statute has yet to be arraigned before Parliament for discussion. The Secretary of State for Streamlining Up, Housing and Neighbourhoods, Michael Gove, on Wednesday that the sketchy bill would be available the following week and what he said and I quote. Change the way the relationship between landlords and tenants works, providing tenants with new protection, which should ensure they are better protected against arbitrary rent increases. Nearly 40,000 individuals have endorsed or appeal taxing Gove, keep this promise, to apply the improvements. 4% before rising by 1.3%, 2.6% and 2.7% in the following three years. The OBR says higher energy prices explain the majority of the downward revision in cumulative growth since March. They also expect a rise in unemployment from 3.6% today to 4.9% in 2024, before falling to 4.1%. Today's decisions mean that over the next five years, borrowing is more than halved. This year, we're forecast to borrow 7.1% of GDP, or £177 billion, Next year, 5.5% of GDP, or £140 billion. Then by 2027-28, it falls to 2.4% of GDP, or £69 billion. As a result, underlying debt as a percentage of GDP starts to fall from a peak of 97.6% in 2025-6 to 97.3% in 2728. I also confirm two new fiscal rules. The first is that...